coordinated do you have to be to be a surgeon? What is up, Zach here with Dr. Eyeball MD. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a third year ophthalmology resident. If you're into anything about medicine, residency, ophthalmology, all that stuff, go ahead and subscribe to the channel down below. So I get this question not infrequently in the comments of the YouTube videos is people asking how coordinated you need to be to be a surgeon, specifically an ophthalmologist, because it's microsurgery. You're doing all your surgery, or most of your surgery, under a microscope. Very fine little movement. And so, if you have a tremor, can you still be a surgeon? Do you need some godlike coordination to be able to do these surgeries? Let's answer those questions right now. So let me just give you a kind of backstory to my first time doing any type of surgical type procedure. It was probably eight years ago, more than eight years ago. It's probably nine years ago, and I'm only 29 now, so I was about 20 years old. Uh, this was probably my sophomore, junior year of college, and I was shadowing a family medicine practitioner. This was in rural Alabama, um, so he had a small clinic, um, pretty remote, and I was there shadowing him, trying to get my, my experience, my shadowing experience for medical school so that I knew everything that being a physician would entail by spending one week with this primary care physician. And while I was there, I was there with a medical student who was rotating from the local kind of medical school in the area. He was on the rotation, I was there. So I'm a college sophomore. He is a second, I think, no, he would have been a third year medical student uh, on his family medicine rotation. And we had a patient get added into the clinic and he had fallen into a doorway and essentially sliced open his brow. And it's kind of ironic looking back because I'm going into oculoplastic surgery, hopefully, um, and I'll be working and doing surgery around the eye, uh, eyebrow, eyelid, that kind of thing. So it is kind of ironic that this was the first time I ever did anything procedural. But he sliced open his brow. It needed a few sutures, it needed a few stitches. And so rather than send him to the emergency room for those, why don't we just do it right there in the clinic? So that's what the attending, uh, this family medicine practitioner decided we would do. And so first crack at it goes to the medical student. Uh, so I'm there kind of in the doorway watching the medical student get ready to try to throw a few stitches into this eyebrow of this patient after he had numbed it up. And so the medical student promptly had a vasovagal response. You see something that grosses you out and your heart rate drops, your blood pressure drops, and you feel like you're gonna faint. Uh, so that's what he did. Um, and then got sent out of the room. So next up is me with my two years of college experience, ready to suture an eyebrow, an eyelid. And I didn't know any better at the time that, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing uh, this procedure. So I give it a try. Um, I get ready to throw the stitch to uh, place the first suture. Uh, it seems simple enough. I did not faint, fortunately. I did not have a vasovagal response. Uh, but I did promptly stick the suture into my finger. Um, and so that was the end of my chance to close this, uh, this eyebrow laceration. So myself and the patient both got tested for HIV. We didn't have it, luckily. Uh, the attending closed the uh, laceration and that was that and that was my first experience doing anything procedural procedural or surgical so to go back to the original question no you do not have to have some sort of god-given abilities to do procedures and work with your hands to do surgery and that applies to ophthalmology as well while you are operating on a micro level meaning the movements are very small and they're within the eye it's intraocular surgery so we're talking about millimeter movements most people can learn them they're not really testing anybody that gets into an ophthalmology residency on their ability to to do surgery prior to getting into residency so you get in based off of other things and then they teach you the surgery and pretty much everybody can do it can learn it some people are gonna be better because some people are just gonna be more gifted surgically and you know be more coordinated and have more kind of spatial control of their body and their hands but everybody can learn it, almost everybody can learn it. And so the answer to the question is, no, you do not need some sort of special ability to be a surgeon. You do not need to have great, amazing hands before even going into surgery, uh, specifically ophthalmology. 
Uh, if you have some, the only thing I could see that would be a limiting factor uh, is if you were maybe missing some of your vital fingers, like the first few here. I still feel like you could do the surgeries without your pinkies uh, and maybe even your ring fingers. Um, so if you're missing your fingers, possibly, or if you had a really, really bad tremor, I'm talking about like really shaking, not like a fine little tremor, because a lot of people, everybody has a tremor under the microscope, some more than others. It comes out when you're nervous sometimes, but I'm talking about like a huge, like pathologic tremor of some sort. That would be kind of the only situation. So to answer a lot of you guys' question on this topic, don't let the fear that you're not gonna be good enough surgically or coordinated enough or have good enough hands limit you from going into a specialty, a surgical subspecialty like ophthalmology. They will teach you to do it. You will learn to do it. You will get better like any other skill. So that's my kind of take on it. The movements themselves are not anything crazy and amazing. The surgeries are really more kind of a mental game. Do you know what to do? Do you know when to do it? Do you know what to do when something bad happens? Uh, and then you develop the surgical skills and kind of the mechanics of it over time. Uh, just with practice and experience. So that's my take on that. You can be a surgeon. Don't let your fear that you can't do it physically limit you uh, unless you have some really weird uh, thing that would obviously prevent you from doing it. Uh, normal people, any most normal people, I feel like uh, you could train to do the mechanical physical part of most surgeries. If you like these kind of videos, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm Dak with Dr. Eyeball MD. I'll see you guys in the next video.